which is the description of the ridges and trenches. So, first you have the mid Atlantic ridge. Now, the reason I am telling you this is that you will be aware of what the what is the function of these ridges and how you are going to solve your uh, problems of ocean currents. Now, next is your mid Indian ridge. Now, these ridges actually separate your ocean basins. The last one is East Pacific. So, these are the three ridges separating your basins. The primary reason is these act as sort of barriers to the ocean currents or ocean flow or ocean flow. So, if you may want to mathematically model the ocean current, you have to take these boundary conditions or these boundaries of the ridges. Now, similarly you have deep sea trenches. Now, what is the function of these deep sea trenches? Why? you should know the location of the trenches. So, ridges are actually boundaries for ocean current circulation, but deep sea trenches. So, the first one in the Atlantic So, these are the main elevations and depressions on the Elevations, of course, are the ocean uh, ridges and the depressions are your trenches. So, in the Atlantic, you have South Sandwich Trench. So, depth you write in kilometers. So, depth is 8.4. So, that means your water and mud will be circulating in this trench. So, south sandwich trench is 8.4 kilometers. Next is the Puerto Rico trench. This is 9.2. Now, in the Pacific, so here you have depth in kilometers. Peru. Peru child trench is 8 kilometers in depth. Next is Aleutian trench. <coughs> Russia, QL Kamchatka Trench. So, 
So, that is 10.5 Japan. Japan trench is 9.8. So, in the Pacific, you have deeper trenches. Mariana's trench. Mariana's trench is 11 kilometers in depth. Then you have Philippines. And the last one is Karma Deck. Tonga, I think this is in Africa. It's ten point eight. Oh, probably so the Pacific is having the deeper trenches. The Indian trench here, the Indian Ocean in the Pacific Ocean. You have the Java Trench. Seven point five kilometers. So these are the features of the trenches. Now, if you this rough idea or uh, you get from what is called a hypsometric curve. The highest elevation on land, and somewhere here you are crossing the sea level, and then it is going like this to a trench. So, this is highest peak, this is the deepest trench. Now, sea level is somewhere here. So, peak is how much? Let us say 5 kilometers. And this is 0, and this is uh, roughly, let us say, 8. So, this percentage is consumed by oceans. Seventy point eight per cent of the earth's surface, and the rest is your land elevation. This is twenty nine point two. So, 70.8 percent of the earth's surface is having a depression from 0 to 8 kilometers and 0 to approximately 5 kilometers is covered by land elevation up to 29.2 percent. So, this is called a hypsometric curve. 
Now, next important diagram is what is called C floor. C floor spreading. Oh, what is this? Now, here you will find I have already told you that the earth's crust is not stable. Apparently, you are since you are sitting on the floor, you will find that you are not moving, but your earth's crust. moves slowly what is the speed speed is approximately 2 to 3 centimeters per year is the movement of the earth's crust so this uh, i think you will be familiar to the geologists but for your knowledge you should know that the earth crust on which most of your offshore structures will be situated will be moving at the rate of 2 to 3 centimeters per year. Now, in this block diagram you will see this movement and how it is affecting you. Now, here you will find geological folds which are coming on the crust that is rock formations. Uh, in geological terms, these rocks are called plates. And in civil, if you are happen to be in the civil engineering or geology department, there is a separate subject which is called plate tectonics, which mainly deal with the movement of these rocks or plates of rocks. Now, they are the main cause of what earthquakes. So, that is why this separate branch of study has come called plate tectonics. Or rather, you can write plate movements. So, if you happen to build offshore structures which are having their foundations on the ocean floor, you have to have some knowledge of this plate tectonics. Anyway, this is a rough sketch of a or a section of the ocean floor. Now, in this region, you will find two plates going against each other. The direction of motion are against each other. So, a fold has come in this region. Uh, which plate will go deeper down actually? 
depends on the velocity and the nature of the plate. Now, here you will find development of a trench. This is the location of a trench. So, very good location for existence of volcanoes. So, trenches are in that way it is dangerous. Now, next is the occurrence of a ridge. So, how a ridge is going to occur? So, when two plates are moving towards each other, we have a trench. So, when two plates are moving away from each other. So, in this diagram you can see that these two plates are moving away from each other in opposite directions. So, this is a location of a ridge. So, this you called oceanic ridge. Now, in this direction you will find the plate movements to take place in this direction. So, this is called a transform fault. So, whenever you are building an offshore structure, be, be careful about locating them in trenches, ridges and fault lines. So, this is actually a fault line. So, these are prime location for existence of earthquakes. So, in India actually there is a fault line on the Gujarat coast, where you have predominance of earthquakes. Another fault line you will find near where this recently the earthquake happened is in the Java Trench. So, Java Trench is famous for earthquakes and Gujarat and also Japanese coast. So, this is called a transform fault and this is your mantle rock. So, your oceanic crust is floating on mantle rock. And since it is floating, it is also moving. So, earthquakes is actually an important study for ocean engineers. It is a civil engineering subject, but once you do any engineering with the sea floor, then you have to have some knowledge of the earthquake dynamics or earthquake phenomena or sea floor dynamics. So, oceanic crust is floating on mantle rock and it is having all this velocity in these directions.
So, you can write that movement from mid ocean ridges switch off your mobile. So, movement starts from mid ocean ridges. So, you write formation. where it is destroyed that is the movement is stopped. So, these are called trenches. Destruction, destruction of the movement. So, the oceanic crust is constantly forming. So, the movement start at a ridge and it is destroyed at a trench or it is stopped at a trench. So, at this juncture a lot of pressure takes place in this area. And if these rocks are unable to bear this pressure, then there will be fracture will occur on the rocks. When the rocks are fractured, then the liquid molten material will come out from the mantle rock. So, you have volcanoes. So, volcanoes and earthquakes. So, this is your bottom profile of about the bottom of the sea floor. The next part is deep sea sediments. Now, ocean engineers since they have to build structures on the sea floor, you have to know have some knowledge about sediments on the sea floor. So, these sediments are caused by what? Now, sediments are mainly rocks. washed down from continents. There is a primary cause for sediments. So, one has to study what is called sediment transport, if you want to go deeper into this. Uh, deep formation of deep sea sediments. And another cause is meteors. It's 
striking ocean. Now, while these rocks are going from your land to the sea, they are getting mixed with shells. mixed with shells and skeletal remains. of marine organisms. So, ocean engineer or geologist has to study the nature of sediments. If you want to build any structure, like your civil engineer, he studies the nature of the soil a separate branch of study has emanated that is called soil mechanics. You have to study the sediment nature or how much strength bearing capacity it has. So, these are normally done by sampling devices. Done by ships which are called grab samplers. Or sometimes they are also called dredgers. So, these are special type of ships which have equipments for excavating soil. But how are we going to lift soils from the deep ocean floor? Well, deep ocean floor is say of the average depth is 6 kilometers. Now, can you design a dredger with a grab having 6 kilometers depth? So, what you are going to do? So, that is the challenge. So, recover material from sediment, from deep sea sediment. So, that is special types of dredges are to be defined, devised for that. We will have a long conductor tube and sledges, where you suck the sediment and transport it up or else you can do by ships which are called drilling vessels. So, you have to design special ships which can lift samples of sediment from the sea floor. So, these vessels basically drill into ocean bottom. So, drilling is another activity which is specialized. So, there are separate organizations which specifically teach and instruct or train professional what is called professional drillers. what I am talking in the class that amount of knowledge will not do for drilling. So, professional drillers have to be trained to lift core samples from seabed. So, that is not a very easy job, it is a risky job and so special personnel and special equipments 
will be there to do deep sea, this is called deep sea drilling. So, the main idea is to lift core samples from the seabed and study the nature. So, what do you, what nature you are going to study? So, you have to find out the chemical nature of these samples. Chemical nature and strength characteristics. If you happen to be in a drill ship, the drill ship is, may have a lab of its own. They will start analyzing the chemical nature and strength characteristics. You have to do it in a soil laboratory. So, in the civil engineering department, you have your soil mechanics lab. There, you can study the strength characteristics of the sample that is the shear strength, cohesive strength and all these things you have to study, bearing strength also. So, sediment thickness, average you write 600 meters. Six hundred meters on seabed. So, this is the texture of the seabed with which you are dealing. sediment particles. The two broad categories are lithogenous Lithogenous means derived from rocks. Now, from where these rocks come? That is mineral grains. Volcanic ash. So, the primary particle of seafloor sediment is lithogenous. Next, you have biogenous. So, derived from organisms. So, these are mainly skeletal remains. Shells, bones, etcetera. This comes from what? The marine fish, whales, etcetera, which have died or their corpses. So, shells, bones. Now, these are main contributors to calcium carbonate.
silica this is called opal opal and phosphate minerals now if you want to do your chemical and strength analysis so you have to segregate all these sediment particles nitrogenous and biogenous there are the different characteristics the last variety is hydrogenous so hydrogenous is so first one is derived from rocks derived from rather you write marine organisms the last one is derived from what is derived from water so this is chemical reaction of sea water now sea water actually the main physical component of sea water is what salt so it will have ionized ions will be present which will aid chemical reaction now as a result of this over a large period you have formation of manganese nodules so they are rich in iron cobalt nickel and manganese so these manganese nodules are found because of chemical reaction of sea water so these are hydrogenous sediments so mostly these manganese nodules you will find in the pacific ocean now sediment particles now if you want to do engineering in the land so you have to know what is the soil and here sediment particles now the first segregation is between sand what is sand and what is mud now in structural engineering strength characteristics differ from sand and mud so sand is the particle size is larger than 0.062 mm or you can write 62 mu m micrometer this is in diameter so that is the definition of sand in mud is smaller than this smaller than 0.062 mm so this is your physical demarcation between sand and mud now deep sea sed sediments <coughs> composition and coverage so some knowledge has to be there in your minds 
if you want to build any offshore structure. So, I told you offshore structures are built around a specific site or an environmental location. So, your composition of sediment in the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean or Atlantic Ocean will greatly vary. Now, here you segregate into brown mud. Next, you have calcareous mud, then you have siliceous mud and siliceous there are two varieties. diatomaceous and the other one is called radiolarian. Coverage you write deep ocean. portion basins you have coverage means the area. So, 38 percent of ocean basins are covered by brown mud, 48 percent of ocean basins are covered by calcareous mud, A rest is 14 percent there is a siliceous variety. So, this is the area coverage and coming to the com composition you have constituents, I think this uh, do not have time now. First you biogenous, now under biogenous you have two categories that is calcareous, the siliceous, the last one you have lithogenous lithogenous are derived from rocks. Now, constituents you write calcareous is 8, 8 percent, siliceous is 1 percent and the uh, this is uh, your brownwood composition and this is 65 and this is 2. So, how much it comes and lithogenous composition is 91. So, you add this total will be 100 percent. Move the paper. So, now you can see actually this is a margin. Anyway, I will just write a little bit about this. So, here the calcareous mud composition is 65 2 and the rest is lithogenous you will have 33. So, this is 100. So, brown mud composition is 
8 percent calcareous sediment, 1 percent siliceous and 91 percent constituent is of lithogenous variety will be there in brown mud. Whereas, in the calcareous mud you have only 33 percent followed and coming to the siliceous mud, the diatomaceous you have 7, diatomaceous and the other is 70, the rest is 23 lithogenous and radiolarian is 4, this is 54 and 42. So, total is 100. So, this is giving you the chemical composition. Thank you.